What's going on everybody? In this video, I wanna talk about five things that Nintendo could do to greatly improve the Super Mario Maker series. So if you're expecting for me to talk about stuff like game styles, course themes, new power-ups, things like that, I already made a video on all that. I'll put a link up here and down in the description down below. So in this video, let's talk about core features that I think could be improved upon or added. Let's get to it. First, multiplayer variety. So Mario Maker 2 added multiplayer modes to huge success. Multiplayer is a ton of fun. Whether you're playing on your couch with a friend or family member, online with some buddies, or playing with random people from around the world. So what could they do to improve multiplayer? Well, more modes. We currently have multiplayer versus and multiplayer co-op. And while these are fun, Nintendo could do more. Looking at other games in the Super Mario franchise, the game I want to look at is Mario Kart. Mario Kart features several different modes that allow you to compete against other people. A standard race would be similar to the way Mario Maker's Multiplayer Versus works now. The first person to make their way through the course and cross the goal wins. What Mario Kart also has is a battle mode. Battle mode could be set up with a few different options in Mario Maker, but essentially it would change the goal from reaching the flagpole at the end of the level to instead taking out your competition, similar to the original Mario Bros title. You could give each player three lives, or balloons, or stocks, or whatever term Nintendo decided to use to signify if your character dies three times, you're out, and the last player standing is the winner. Additionally, within battle mode, they could also have the option similar to Shine Thief in Mario Kart, where there's an item or clear condition that players have to fight over, and then continue to hold it as long as possible, and whoever has it the longest during the duration of the match, or to a certain designated time amount, is granted the win. Nintendo could also add a similar mode to the Mario Kart Time Trials. Why don't we call this, oh, I don't know, Multiplayer Ninja Speedrun? This mode would let you load up any course using a level ID or randomly select a popular one, and you can race against ninjas who have previously run the course. Like in Mario Maker 2's normal Ninja Speedrun mode, this could be set to display a ton of ninjas, down to just a few, with the added option of only showing ninjas of your Nintendo Switch friends who have also run the course. Last, and certainly not least, wait for it, wait for it, Multiplayer Royale. Now that we've seen Super Mario 35 in action, and due to the fact that it's no longer available, that Mario Royale experience is missing. Nintendo could potentially revive this experience within Super Mario Maker 3 and beyond. I don't know how many players would be most appropriate for this mode, whether it be 35 or 50 or 99 players, but the idea is simple. Queue up a series of levels, potentially ones that already have a good player ranking score for standard multiplayer versus, and when a player dies, they're out. Now, because we'd be using player-made levels for the maps, I don't know how collecting coins to earn power-ups and sending enemies out to other players would work, so instead, maybe at certain time intervals, the player with the least completed levels would be eliminated, just in case someone decided to be cute and stand at the beginning of the first level and not risk death at all. All right, so now we've talked about these multiplayer modes. Let's talk about how those modes could work. Number two, a better level tagging system. So I talked about this briefly in my video talking about what I wanted to see in Super Mario Maker 3. But essentially, when uploading a level to the Nintendo servers, we could see an additional screen that prompts the creator to designate which modes the level is intended to be played in. The creator can determine if the level is appropriate for single player, multiplayer versus, multiplayer co-op, or one of the new modes that I suggested. After people play the levels, they can rank whether they thought the level was appropriate for that mode or not, and the better a level ranks, the more likely it gets randomly chosen for other people to play. So we've talked a lot about Mario Maker multiplayer so far, and I know what you're thinking. Riz, why are we going to add all these multiplayer modes and better tags for multiplayer when multiplayer is this giant lag fest? Well, you asked for it. Number three, dedicated servers for multiplayer. There's not a whole lot to say about this one, as people have been asking for this for years. It's not 1995 anymore. Nintendo, give us dedicated multiplayer servers. And now's a good time for me to let you guys know that the majority of my viewers aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing and you can always change your mind later if you want to. Moving on to number four, integration with the Nintendo Switch online app. It's honestly surprising that Nintendo hasn't already put Super Mario Maker on the app. With the inclusion of multiplayer modes, it makes sense to give us the option to use this app for voice chat options that it already brings to other games. It would be fun to banter with your opponents in multiplayer versus, and it makes even more sense for working together in multiplayer co-op. This would be an option that's entirely opt-in, so if you don't want to hear it, you don't have to. But if someone is connected to the app, it could show an icon near their me on the multiplayer screen or a speaker near their character while talking in-game, so you know whether they're opted in or not and when they're speaking. 
Additionally, this app could also be used as a replacement for the now defunct Super Mario Maker bookmark site and give players a new way to browse levels when they're away from their Switch. You could scroll through levels similar to the way that you can in-game and mark levels that you'd like to play later. So when you boot back into Super Mario Maker 2, there's a pool of levels waiting for you. And finally, number five, USB mouse support. This one is for my docked players. Nintendo recently released a title called Game Builder Garage, which is a programming game that teaches people how to visually program small little games and share them with their friends and online. It's a lot of fun, and I've been having a blast messing with it. But having played it both with just a controller and then later with a supported USB mouse, adding mouse support to Mario Maker would be amazing. I've always enjoyed creating levels in Super Mario Maker, but I felt that when moving from Mario Maker 1 with the dedicated gamepad on the Wii U to Mario Maker 2 on the Switch, the loss of the gamepad made it a lot more difficult to build while docked. The tools to build with the controller are all there, but for me personally, I found that building with the gamepad on the Wii U felt way more natural to me, so in Mario Maker 2, I preferred to do all of my building undocked, which didn't allow for me to build on the TV or while streaming. I find that adding USB mouse support would make a night and day difference to building levels while docked. Speaking of streaming, I do want to let you guys know that I do stream pretty regularly over at twitch.tv slash rosarje, so come on by and maybe give me a follow. So that's my list of five things that Nintendo could do to improve the Mario Maker series. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, and let me know down in the comments if there's any other ideas that you have that you also think could make the game better. Or jump into my Discord and let me know over there. I have links to all my social media down below, and as always, thank you so much for watching.